Hi, I'm Z Garcia, and you're watching The Dice Tower. <laughs> Hi, I'm Eric Summerer, and here's what's coming from the Dice Tower this week. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the news for November 11th, 2013. It is Veterans Day in America, and we salute all those who have served the armed forces in their respective countries. Uh, but today we're here to talk about the board game news. But before we do that, some interesting things. First of all, I want to tell you right now, Really pause this video and go check out the Jack Vassa Memorial Fund. There has already been so many fantastic items added to the Jack Vassa Memorial Fund auction. This is an auction that helps out uh, a charity fund that I run. You can find out more about that at jackvassal.org. But I'm telling you, tell people about this this auction gate. Let's go right now and tweet it, Facebook it, and tell if, if you work in a company. Uh, maybe you want to put up some games for auction here. If you know people in a company, bug them till they put them up for auction. A bid on this stuff. I mean, there's some really fantastic things, starting with uh, some themed stockings, uh, ticket to ride stockings, to a whole pile of games from one company. There's there's so many neat things, uh, and you can find a link to that directly from the Dice Tower website to this geek list on Board Game Geek. It's just amazing, and I thank everybody who's been involved so far. There's still two more weeks of this. So lots more things can be added. Lots more bids can be done. So check that out. Thank you for everyone who uh, liked our top 100 last week. We kind of uh, trained through that and did put up one every day last week. So there was quite a few top 100 lists placed last week. And I'm finished. So this week, two things are going to happen. One, I'm going to redo the People's Choice Top 100, uh, numbers 50 through 1. So for those of you who've been screaming about getting that back up, I will do that. And I'm going to be doing Melody's Top 100. Now, both of those we're going to do as live videos, but this time I will be recording them on my computer as a backup just in case we lose the live thing. And then if the live thing kind of bobbles, I can still post them and then we'll never do live again or at least figure a better way out how to do live. Um, I'm doing them live because it's just a faster way, especially with the, the myriad of reviews that we need to get done at this point in time. But hopefully all top 100s will be done this week, and you can check the channel for when those we post it. I'm going to guess that we'll be doing Melody's Top 100 on Thursday and The People's Choice on Friday. So, let's get to the news. There's a metric ton of news this week, so much so that I, you know, I had a hard time picking even a hot news item, so let's just get right into it. AEG has shown yet another teaser picture for their new expansion for Smash Up. This one is obviously Spies or Gamblers or James Bondians or something like that. Bruno Fiduti and Serge Legette uh, have announced a game that they've been working on for a while, Space Station Argo, which uh, was supposed to be produced by another company, it didn't work out. Now it's going to be coming from Flatlined Games, so I look forward to that. Fantasy Flight Game has announced six new lieutenants for uh, Descent. So these de these lieutenant packs seems like there's going to be quite a few of them. I'm real as as a as the Overlord in Descent. I'm always excited about this sort of thing. Um, they talk about uh, let's see. They got Rillin Olivin, who's kind of evil. Uh, Tristane Olivin, his brother, who's a necromancer, died and came back. Hmm. Verminous, the Rat King. I look forward to using this guy. And then Merklace. Is he an evil genie? I'm not really sure exactly what he is. And then there's two other ones, Raithen and Serena. And what's interesting about these guys is, is that they can be a, a lieutenant for the Overlord, or they can be a hero. So they have a path. Choose wisely, hero or bad guy. I think that's a neat idea to be able to use them in both ways. Um, that, that should be interesting. Um, Let's see, also there's a couple Kickstarters I want to talk about. One, there's one of t-shirts. Uh, these are dice portrait t-shirts. I don't, you know, this doesn't have a lot to do with board gaming. It's more role playing, I suppose, but I love dice and these look really cool. So I love the, the one, especially with the hundred sided dice head. The National Toy Hall of Fame has announced two new inductees, uh, the Rubber Ducky and Chess. So Chess is now in the National Toy Hall of Fame. Although I think very few people in the world look at Chess as a toy, but whatever. This is news that I missed somehow. It was announced in September, but it was announced by a French company, GameZone, that they'll be doing the 25th edition of Hero 
a hero, not hero escape, but hero quest. Hero quest. I almost said hero escape. Don't get so excited. That has not been announced. But hero quest, the game I played as a kid, loved that game. Um, 25th anniversary. So I guess I, I was a teenager when I played it, but I thought it was a fantastically cool game of questing game. And it would be really neat to see what they do with that. Also on Kickstarter, there's a couple interesting things. Stackbots, which is a game I reviewed a couple weeks ago. A little card game about bots. It has an expansion. And Dream Spires, uh, which is a pretty neat game about where you build your uh, an Oxford college. This is one that looks really neat to me because you're trying to attract different uh, people from history and different scholars to your college as it goes through time. If it is as chock full of history as it looks, that, that one's going to be super exciting. Uh, Plaid Hat Games has announced a whole new series of games, the Crossroad Games. I, I'm not sure how they work together yet, uh, but the first one, Dead of Winter, from Isaac Vega, uh, is, is a meta-cooperative game. This is a game where everybody is cooperating, but in order for you to specifically win, you have a specific goal. So it seems like you're all cooperating, but at the same time, you all, ha you all have to do something different. That sounds good. The artwork they've shown so far looks good, and you have to survive the winter. WizKids has shown off the new grand prize for the Dominion War. The, the large uh, DS9 space station looks pretty cool. So uh, those lucky winners who will get that. And they've also announced that Quarriers is coming for the iPad. This is something I think a lot of people will be pleased about. And it will support solo play and multiplay and pass and play also. There are a ton of games about to be released also, uh, either late November or December. These are estimated dates, of course, but these companies have announced some release. First of all, we have Buccaneer Bones from Watsopalag, uh, Dice Rolling Pirate Game. They put out some pretty cool games in the past. It's been a while since we've seen one from them. This one looks fun. I believe it was released at Essen. You should see it soon. Portal has both Legacy Testament of Duke de Crecci. Uh, I've already reviewed that one. I thought it was a fantastic game about building a family. And Theseus, which is a real, I just got my copy this past week. It looks really cool uh, from Portal. Academy Games, Freedom Underground Railroad should be coming out soon. It was released at Gen Con. Now the full release coming. Uh, a cooperative game where you're helping slaves uh, escape during the pre-Civil War days. Grill Games, Monster Derby. I did a preview on that one. It will be being released soon as you have different monsters that are racing across and punching each other as they go. And you have invested interest in seeing some of those monsters succeed and some of them to not. Uh, Gray Fox and Eighth Summit is Expedition, Famous Explorers. This is a reprint of a very popular uh, Kramer game, and that one will be coming out soon. For Fantasy Flight Games, a whole ton of stuff. The Warhammer Disc Wars, where you would, it, uh, it's the re-theming of Disc Wars in the Warhammer uh, universe, where you have discs and you flip them over to move and attack. Uh, new expansion for the Lord of the Rings uh, card game, The Voice of Isengard, or Isengard. And, oh, we hate that guy, don't we? Android has a new, Android Netrunner, a new expansion pack, Fear and Loathing. Star Wars has a new expansion pack, Heroes and Legends. And this one looks interesting because just looking at the picture in the box makes me think that it's not uh, from the actual movies, but maybe pulling some of the other stuff from the series into it. Um, maybe I'm wrong, but I, I'm hoping so. It looks cool. Uh, X-Wing, Imperial Aces, these are repaints of some of the TIE Fighters, and well, I don't know, I think they look really cool. I'm really excited about this set. I would love to fly a red X-Wing, I mean, I'm sorry, a red TIE Fighter around the board. Battle Lord 2nd Edition, very interested to seeing what this complete overhaul of the system has to bring us. Uh, Blue Moon Legends, we talked about this one. This is uh, Blue Moon was released a long time ago. It was a two-player game and then just had expansion after expansion after expansion after expansion. This puts all of that into one box. Uh, let's see, Asmodee has announced the C3K. Oh, the Cyclades, or Cyclades, and Kemet crossover. You can use the monsters from each and the other game. I'm so very excited about this. This is one of the most exciting expansions ever for me. Uh, so little, so, so, but wow, okay. Uh, also, they've announced three other games, Origins, Expedition Northwest Passage, and Prosperity, which is a game about uh, being prosperous, but at the same time, thinking about the environment. Woo! Tons of stuff coming out. Christmas is coming. Empty your wallets. There's so many games. In the Dice Tower Network, 
Plat hat number 112 talks about the new game that we I talked about earlier, Dead of Winter. They announce it and talk a bit about it. Probably if I had listened to that show, I would have been able to give you more details. Not just another gaming podcast, number 38. They talk about all sorts of things, including uh, Clash of Cultures, the game coming out. Flip the Table, number 41, talks about a board game based on The Muppet Show. Woohoo! Uh, D6 Generation, number 135. They go over the, the Dice Duel, a Space Cadets Dice Duel. And they also talk about game group dynamics. How do you keep a game group? What's it like when you, you're with the same game group for years, decades, actually? Uh, Rolling Dice and Taking Names, number 26, goes over Lords of Waterdeep. The Snake Cast talks about games that are friendship wreckers. Happy Mitt number 16 interviews Matt Worden. Push Your Luck number 24 uh, talks with Michael Fox and they take a look at Essen games. Um, oh, and I missed the game pit also. It takes a look at some of the stuff that has come from Essen. This week from the Dice Tower, we will be releasing episode zero. If you've never listened to the Dice Tower audio podcast, I'd encourage you to do so. But if you do listen to it, if, you, if you're thinking about it, this would be the perfect time for you to come on board. That'll be being released tomorrow, Tuesday. And this is kind of an introduction to the podcast. And we talk about uh, how we put the podcast together and ten to- our top 10 essential games. So... All that's coming from the Dice Tower this week, along with hopefully another board game university. Veli emails a question in, and and basically he was watching our top 100, and he says, what makes a deck builder a deck builder? What makes a party game a party game? What makes a filler game a filler game? Et cetera, et cetera. And the fact is is that all these definitions are going to be very hazy. I can tell you definitively this is a party game, but somebody might well disagree with me. Now, I think that in in the long run, it doesn't really matter what we've classified games as. I mean, it might matter for game award purposes. It might matter for, I don't know what else it matters for. But, uh, I mean, a deck building game to me is a game in which you, during the course of the game, you build a deck. A party game is a game that I would take to a party. A filler is a game that I could play very quickly between other games. Those are very loose definitions, and to say one game fits in a category doesn't. There's always going to be one game that stretches the boundaries, and you say, I don't know if it fits in this category. But in the long run, the answer is, it doesn't really matter. For reviews this week, I really can't tell you what's going to be coming because I'm going to try to get as much done as I possibly can. Any game you're looking at here on the top shelf has a much higher chance of getting reviewed. I think I can promise you Glass Road will be reviewed this week and then probably several of the other games here. And then there's a good possibility that any of these other games here, there is lots to get done, lots to get played and reviewed as quickly as possible. So I, why am I showing you this? Let's get back to it, but I should mention that my contributors have a pile of reviews, so there will be many reviews this week on the Dice Tower channel. Each week I talk about games that I've, one of the shelves of my collection and why I'm keeping the games on that shelf. Uh, this week I'm looking at this shelf here. El Grande is a very easy one. That's one I will always hang on to. It's a great area control game. Lots of fun. Die Color Bande is a game in which you actually pick up the box and roll a marble around inside the box. Manhattan's a pretty cool game where you build towers. Power Grid is a fantastic game in which you are powering up either America or Germany. Lots of fun, good auctions in that game. Tales of Arabian Nights, one of the greatest storytelling games ever made. Carnival Zombie, this is a new one, just hit the shelf, actually knocked a couple games off so I could fit it in. And there's still a little bit of room here for a thinner game that we might fit in at some point. Uh, But I just did a review of that one last week. Great game. Demacher, a game about German elections. A heavy game, although I have to say, I toyed with the idea of getting rid of it because I don't play it as much as I'd like to, but it's still good. Aladdin's Dragons, this is one I think really should be reprinted uh, because it was such a a great blind bidding auction game uh, from Richard Brees. And then Earth Soup, a game that many people haven't played, but it is a fantastic, cool little game in which you uh, control amoebas who grow and evolve in different ways and attack other ones. Uh, I've done a review on this one, I think earlier this year, lots of fun. So these, this is a size of box which companies don't use very much anymore. 
I mean, even this Carnival Zombie is a different size. It just happens to fit on this shelf. Uh, I think this size has been retired, which is kind of unfortunate because it fit on the shelves here so very neatly. But anyway, that's another shelf. <laughs> Hey folks, today I want to talk to you a little bit about a game that I designed called Nothing Personal. Now, I'm not here to promote the game that much, although if you'd like to buy it, go right ahead. Um, Nothing Personal is a game that I designed with Steve Avery, who should get tons of credit. People always talk about me being the designer, but Steve did just as much as I did on the design of this game. So talk about him. Unless you don't like it, then it's my fault. But Nothing Personal is a game uh, which is about gangsters and... Anyway, I'm not here to talk about the game itself. I'm here to talk about my opinion of the game. Uh, a lot of people ask me, why wasn't nothing personal in your top 100? And, you know, do you not like your own game? Are you burned out after playing it? Well, the answer about being burned out, no, not really. I mean, I, I, I would gladly play this. I have, this is a, a shrink-wrapped copy, but I have a copy of my own collection. And I don't plan on getting rid of it. If someone wants to play it, I'll play it because it's an interesting and fun game, I think. But I can't put nothing personal in uh, my top 100. I just can't do it. I, I can't even put it, I, I can't rate it at all. I haven't rated it on Board Game Geek. I mean, I mean, obviously I can rate it. I suppose if I gave it a rating, I'd probably give it a nine because I really think it's a good game. I, I really like playing it. I'm very proud of it. Uh, there's some minor things that maybe I would change uh, if I put out a second edition of it, but I, I really like it. But I just can't do it myself because it's my own game. I'm certainly willing, and I will, I will if, if anybody in the Dice Tower makes a game, and if anybody uh, um, that I, a good friend of mine makes a game, I will sit there and review the game, and I'll say I love it. If I love it, I'll say I love it, and I don't care what you think. I don't care if you think there's collusion going on or whatever. I just can't do that with my own games, because people are going to look at it and say, oh, it's your game, and you know you gave it a high ranking, or you don't think your own game is a perfect 10, what's wrong? I don't really have time to get into that. So would it have made my top 100? Probably, but I really don't even try to think of it that way. I, I take this out of the whole thing. In fact, I refuse to allow nothing personal to be in the Dice Tower Awards next year, period. Now I will, again, I'll gladly give Dice Tower Awards to, to people who are part of the Dice Tower Network, to contributors to the show. If Eric Summer designed the game, I would put that in the Dice Tower Awards, you know, so on and so forth. But I will not put my own game in. That's my prerogative, and I can do that. Now, if this wins other awards, which I doubt it will, um, but if, if it did, sure, that'd be cool. But I don't run those other awards while I do run the Dice Tower Awards. So I do it not because I'm trying to be super humble. Um, but I just do it to, to save problems down the road and because it just feels weird. So, you know, I'm glad people out there like it. I've, I've seen a lot of good reviews. I've seen a lot of bad reviews and that's fine. I fully expected this to be a game that was very divisive. Uh, and, and it is across the board and some people love playing it and some of you not so much. And that's fine. Never feel like you have to, you know, oh, well, I don't want to hurt Tom's feelings. You, you're not going to hurt my feelings. Okay. Look at all the reviews I've done. But at the same time. I feel really weird at pushing. I feel really weird about promoting it myself. Even this segment here, people are going to say, what? You're talking about nothing personal again. And that's kind of odd for me. But, you know, if you, you can buy it if you want to. <laughs> so anyhow, that's why it wasn't in my top 100. Uh, not because I think it's a bad game or I'm sick of playing it, but mostly because it just feels odd for me to put one of my own games in there. And then I know when I do this, there's going to be comments below where people say, ah, oh, who cares what people think? Do it yourself. But it's not so much about what people think, it's about what I think. It just seems weird for me to put it there. So I'm just not gonna do it. All right, that's it for this week. Lots of stuff coming up in two weeks. I'll be at Board Game Geek Con. I hope to see many of you there. We'll be doing a live show, or well, not a live show, but a live recorded show at Board Game Geek Con. Uh, and uh, hopefully a lot of you have a chance to come up and say hey there and talk to us. So anyway, until next time, my name is Tom Vassell. Go put stuff in that Jack Vassell Memorial Fund auction. I'll see you then. To find out more about all of our podcasts, check out Dicetowernetwork.com. To see a listing of our videos, head to Dicetower.com. We'd like to thank our sponsor, Cool Stuff Incorporated, where you can buy games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock.